Hey guys, welcome back to We Watch the Movie. I'm Mike and I'm here to review The Martian. I don't know why I had to touch myself so that you knew for sure it was me and not another person standing in the room. This is my birthday present for my five-year-old daughter because she's effing cool and that's Batman choking out Superman because that's what would happen. I don't care what you say about it. He doesn't need superpowers. Sure, Superman could sneeze and blow Batman in half, but this movie is all about doing everything you can against all odds and that is what Batman's doing right there. Did that work? I think I pulled that one off. Uh, anyways, The Martian, guys, I saw this last night alone, just like Matt Damon was in this movie. I was stranded by my friend on a planet with a packed theater, and everybody's like, look at the guy walking in by himself. He's alone! He's alone! I don't care. I don't mind going to see movies by myself. I kind of like it. It's kind of refreshing. If you haven't done it before, go see a movie by yourself. On like a Friday night when everybody else is out partying and stuff, just go to a movie. Get you some popcorn, just snuggle up in your little seat. Wear a fucking Snuggy. Who gives a shit? Um, anyway, so this movie star is directed by Ridley Scott. And it looks like it's directed by Ridley Scott, by the way. A, a lot of the shots in this look like Prometheus. Even the uh, astronaut suits. But yeah, it's directed by Ridley Scott, who is not known for hopeful films. I mean, let's look at it. Let's look. Let's let's do it together. Just off the top. Let's just look at the, uh, the known for films. Blade Runner. Dark as hell. Alien. Dark as hell. Prometheus. Dark as hell. American Gangster, dark as hell. He's not a guy who usually makes movies about hope. Even Robin Hood looked like... I don't... I couldn't think of anything in time. But this movie is so hopeful and happy and good without being ham-fisted and corny and hallmarky. Um, but yeah, let's talk about it. The cast is amazing from top to bottom. Matt Damon, Jessica Chastain, Jeff Daniels. Always good to see Jeff Daniels in a movie. Um, my favorite Jeff Daniels character, by the way, the one who died early in Speed. Spoiler alert. Look at this roster here, okay? Matt Damon, Jessica Jastain, Kristen Wiig, Jeff Daniels, Michael Pina, Sean Bean, Kate Mara, Sebastian Stan, The Winter Soldier, Axel Henney, Shiwatella Echekafor, uh, McIntyre Davis, Daniel de Glabber. Every single tiny part in this movie is played by somebody way too good to play that tiny of a part. But it's okay. It works out. Um, they must have loved this script as much as I did because it's written by Drew Goddard who directed Cabin in the Woods and... I didn't know that until the end of this movie. Uh, I was watching it and I'm thinking, wow, this, this script is weird. For Ridley Scott, this is such a hopeful, happy movie. Uh, it doesn't fit with his other movies so well. And then at the very end of the movie, it comes up written by Drew Goddard. And I'm thinking, that makes so much sense. Because you've got this dark, dark premise of this poor guy left alone against all odds. Uh, they're on a space mission and Matt Damon's character gets hit by an antenna or some shit. They think he's dead. They have to escape because there's a storm. Lo and behold, he's still alive with, on Mars alone. It would take them four years to get back to rescue him. He's got no food, but he's a botanist, so he has to learn to plant his own food, how to make himself, how, how to make the planet habitable for a human being so he can survive against all odds. It's a dark, dark story if you think about it, being alone on Mars and scared and, uh, Stuck up there for at least four years of your life, if you survive. But the whole movie is so hopeful because of the way it's written and the way it's drawn up and the way they do it. It's not depressing. It's not ugly. It's not any of this stuff. It's a movie that you just feel good walking out of. You even feel good while he's on Mars alone. That's not to say that the drama's not there because Matt Damon kills it in this movie. He does an amazing job. It might be my favorite role he's ever done just because... His character is so good, too, because he's such a hopeful guy. Like, yeah, there's moments of pure despair where it's like, oh my god, everything's gone to shit, what am I gonna do? And those hard, you know, gut check moments that he has to go through. There's a scene where he has to, he's stabbed with something, and you, you can see it in the trailer, and he has to pull it out, and just his acting that one scene alone is so real. He's not like just badass Ramboing it or anything. I mean, he's like almost crying like a little girl, like uh, like you would if you had a fucking rod jammed in you. Uh, he does such a good job in that scene of just reacting to the pain as a normal guy. I don't, I didn't see Matt Damon with this, who's a very noticeable face. I, I saw a character, and, and that's, that's something to be said for that. It's not like he was playing a Superman or anything like that, a superhero or anything like that. Shut up, Batman. It was a really, really well acted movie, and the whole way they told the story was just so uh, uh, inspiring. I'm just gonna say it. I'm gonna be corny, I'm gonna say it. Especially certain dialogues towards the end of the movie. I think this, this movie's about survival, it's about not giving up, it's about having hope, and it's about just the world coming together as a whole to save just one tiny little human being. It's such a happy, hopeful, good movie, and you feel good the entire time you watch it. Not to mention the fact that it's smarter than shit. I don't science much in my daily activities of life, 
But it was cool to watch how he figured this shit out. Like, uh, how, how he'd figure out how to get water, how he'd figure out how to fix all the problems that he was facing up there. I didn't know half the shit they were talking about, and it was still interesting as hell. It was like watching Iron Man work in his basement to create a suit. Uh, the music was great for scenes like that. The special effects were great for things like that. It's not a special effects movie. Still, yeah, even with all the special effects in it. But Mars looks badass. When you see these scenes and there's just like random just tornadoes hanging out, it's so cool looking. And science nerds, nerds, are gonna freaking love this movie for how realistic they made it and how much time they took. I, it's impressive when you're watching it thinking, good lord, I don't know if these facts check out, but it feels like these facts check out. Um, someone else can check that for me because I got too much shit to do. It's a movie that you walk out of feeling so damn good, feeling like you can accomplish anything. And that's not, I'm not saying it has a happy ending, I'm not giving anything away, I'm just saying that the whole story is just so well told. It's told with so much hope and passion and fight, and I just love the climb, and that's what this movie's about. It's about overcoming odds, and it's, it, it makes you feel all tingly and nice inside. So, that leads me to the problem. Still yet, even though it's written great, the characters are lovable, I love everything about this movie except for how fucking long it was. This did not need to be 2 hours and 41 minutes long. I'm sorry, but the cast was all good, but you could have cut some shit out. By the time the ending's happening, I'm so tired of sitting in the seat, and I could sit through a 3 hour movie. Uh, and I like this movie, but still, yeah, it just didn't need it. It took some, it, it took some wind out of its sail. Get some deleted scenes in that bitch, man. Uh, I did not see the need for this to be that long. That's the only bad thing I can say about it. I give it a strong 8.5. I really like The Martian, you guys. It's just, it's one, I feel that way because I'd like to rewatch it and get that same inspiring feeling that I got watching it this time. But I know what a job it's going to be, and it's going to be half my fucking day. But I, I do love this movie. 8.5, almost a 9 for me. Definitely go see The Martian uh, and enjoy it. I did not see it in 3D because that screening was sold out. Question of the day. What are three things that if you could pick any three items to take with you, if you were going to be stranded on Mars for four years, what would they be? Comment below. Let me know. Until next time, guys, thanks for watching. Follow us at Twitter at WeWatchTheMovie and on our Facebook and the link below for videos you can't get here. I'm Mike. Click that subscribe button and get some wham up in you. We watched a movie. Yeah. We watched a movie.